Hey, I'm Scotty and in this tutorial I want to show you how to sketch a face in only seven steps. This is a loose observational sketching technique which will really help you improve your ink portraits, particularly focusing on people looking up or people looking down. So we're going to start the tutorial with faces anchored down, so I've got two of those first. Okay, step number one is to simply visualize what's going on, what is the structure underneath this, underneath the hair and what's going on. So I've drawn a quick Loomis method to show you what I'll be visualizing. So we have here the black line is where this back of the skull is. It's a big sphere and it comes down to the chin. And then the next thing I'm looking at is the angles. So I'm looking at the angle of the face. See how tilted that face is. And then the features of the face, so the brow would come here and the bottom of the nose. You can see that they're quite tilted this way. It just helps you to observe those things because we don't want to be sketching the face straight when the whole head is tilted. Here, this distance here between the chin and the bottom of the nose is a lot smaller than the distance between the brow and the hairline. So we've got to make sure her forehead is a lot bigger than the distance between the nose and the chin. So those angles are really important. If you're a beginner, you could draw this in pencil as well to give you a bit of a rough guide. So you've got the general proportion of the face. So step number two is the silhouette. So we're going to be sketching around that blue shape around the person. So this can be really rough. This is loose sketching. Um, and as we're going, I'm telling myself, if, if it's wrong, if it's off, we're going to able to fix it later. We're just getting a good guess. So I'm coming around the hair, it's the side of her face there. And then we come out to the shoulder and down that arm, something like that. Now, as I'm sketching, I can look at these other points. So coming down here around the hair, it comes in the back of the neck there. And then down to shoulder and this way. Okay, so that's a general, just a quick silhouette. Step number two is to outline the face. So I'll put that in red. And I can just see here, about halfway between the top and where the shoulder is, that is where the hairline is, somewhere about there. And this is just roughly going around, come around this side, making sure this shape here, the shape of the hair is approximately right. Now, where's the chin? The chin is somewhat in the middle here. The chin is a really important part to get right. Just, just looking at that shape of the face right here. I'm not trying to do the nose too much there, just in case it's a bit off. But we can have a look at that later. Okay, now I've got the face shape. I want to divide the, sh the face up into those three sections that we had a look at before. So I'm going to place four dots between the eyebrows there and either side of the nose. So I have to make sure that this, this first one is a lot bigger than the other two. So I can see the gap between her eyebrows. It becomes about there, maybe a bit higher. And then because the face is angling this way, I have to tilt the two dots to the left. And between the two, the chin and those eyebrows, it's not right in the middle, it's slightly lower than halfway because this section here is going to be the smallest section and then it gets bigger as it goes up. Okay, so we have our four dots. You can see the angle and a little bit of an angle this way. Now the fifth step is to do the brow and the bottom of the nose. So let's start between, start at the dots and go across like this and then going up like, okay, we're gonna fix some of it later if it's a bit off. Now the bottom of the nose, we start with the side just going up from the dot and coming down like that. And then we can see it comes out. Let's draw the end of the nose. It comes out about there. And then we can draw that bottom of the nose there between. Um, it's back like that. So we can also see here where it comes to. So from that eyebrow, it comes down towards the left and then goes towards the end of the nose there. The sixth step is to do the eyes and mouth. We can do those in between. So we're going up here. Now the eyes, you can see here, they're really set high because she's looking down like this. So we have to go straight up from that side of the nose and right up where that eyebrow is. The width of the nose is the same distance between the eyes. So I'm putting two dots there and then the same width as the nose across up to there. Now I have to, I have to keep that angle in mind so I bring that down a bit more. So I want to get the eyes on a slight angle. And it is a bit confusing because those eyebrows I've done a little bit wonky. So now when we're drawing the eyes here, you have to imagine this like this sphere inside. So the eye isn't straight, the eyebrow, it's got that curve. It's got this curve here. So let's draw that curve like this, a curve like this. And we can add eyelashes along there, like so. Okay, now the mouth. So between the chin and the nose, we can go up about halfway. In the middle of the eye, we come down and halfway between the chin and the nose there. And we come across that angle and we draw that line, the split between the lips. That's what we're gonna focus on. Just draw that first and then a little line for under that bottom lip. Okay, so now I've got the features of the face. If you get something wrong, like I'm just seeing that that line there is probably a little bit too angled. So I bring, I've got my Posca pen and I'll fix little mistakes. And I can go around here 
and I just change the angle there and I see here the cheek comes out at a bit more angle so change that angle there and bring in the hair especially looking at that that face shape after you've done the details because often that's where it changes um, we can also add these little detail uh, on the end of the nose we want to show that shape on the end so you often put a little up there and then around the eyes there can be some detail um, and there's a cheek here so very lightly your chin line there and the hair comes a little bit closer here so it's sort of molding what you've done and the ear I'm not, I'm not thinking of that sphere anymore I'm just looking at from observation the bottom of the ear comes to about there and it's a great way to sketch it's very free and loose now I'm just doing a bit more detail this is step number seven which is details and adjustments so these sort of details still giving them each line a lot of love and care as we do wrinkles on the clothes this, this underarm here um, this big wrinkle here and this one I will do that in the watercolor I think okay and then the hair I don't want to do every strand it's just showing the direction of the hair which way where is it coming from and with these same as wrinkles I draw a line and then you can go back over and wave, wave over the top of the line and then the glasses you might be asking Scott do the glasses so let's see get this right so the middle of the glasses is here and probably already lost the space there with that hair but fit them in anyway to the edge so there's the glasses it's good they don't stand out too much so there we go we followed that process and we're able to sketch the face at that angle which is quite tricky okay we've got another face here and I'm looked at looked at the structure here at the angle so we have the angle here I would still slightly exaggerate the size of the forehead and minimize the size of the between the nose and the chin just slightly so that you can see the head is tilted so again you can draw this in pencil if you like so I'm looking at that angle and that's the shoulder and we're coming down this way now I can look at the other line and just make sure this shape is approximately the same even if you've got it wrong even if it's not right you can always draw a second line to change the angle later now I'm looking at the bottom of the hair there and I'm seeing the angle finish off the hair about there I'm not sure exactly uh, where the hand is so I'm just going to leave that there come across from the shoulder so it's just that I really only needed to do that outline there I think that's enough there okay next step is to do the face so we're doing this red shape that I've shown on the screen okay now I want that nice area of hair we're coming down to where that chin is and the, the face is slightly longer than that area of hair so that would be about even but I'll come down to about there that's where the chin is so we're just trying to get that rough shape of the face it's better just to have a, a go than spend too long trying to get that right so if you're doing it in pencil I wouldn't I wouldn't be rubbing that out too much just have a go and you can adjust it later okay now we've got the face shape so let's get on to those dots so that's the next step putting those dots in uh, the angle of the face is coming down this way so if I divide that into three one two three but then I bring it down slightly because we want it to look like it's she's looking down so that's the between the eyebrows there and the next one halfway between the chin and those the brow let's go down slightly a bit more and it's slightly it's at an angle this way so I bring this dot out to the right so take your time putting those dots in make sure that you have the right angle for the tilt and if there is an angle this way make sure that angle is right too now I've got the structure it's a lot easier to put in the face and that's why I'm not so worried about the outline of the face being absolutely perfect because once you get the facial features in you can go back and change them change the face shape to suit so here's that eyebrow actually I might want a bit more angle on the eyebrow see how it comes up that way okay and then the bottom of the nose so we can start on this side just above the dot that's where that side the nostril is and then you draw the other side and then I'm going to draw the bottom so we don't see any nostrils here it's just the end of the nose now where does it come up to you can put a little dot comes down at an angle there and that's the bridge of the nose so we draw a little line like that I often like to focus just on the bottom of the nose and then in these these angled views to just draw a little bit of the bridge of the nose there and there now the next step is the eyes so we're going to go up straight from the side of the nose you can see that and put it quite high up usually it'd be two-thirds up but because she's angled it's even further up here and the width of the nose is about that wide and we come across what's the angle I see a slight angle here and then another width of the nose this way it's sort of curving around the face okay and then so then we join those lines up but we make sure they curve down we curve it down here okay once again you can add some eyelashes especially on the left side here as it's towards the side and then the mouth so up from the chin towards the nose halfway and then up a little bit across and you can see I'm comparing it to the eye middle of the eye on this one as well same as on this one and then here the corner of the mouth is on the side of the nose I'm just imagining that line that we we talked about here it curves around 
So that means this mouth would also curve around. So that's what I'm doing when I'm drawing this mouth. Mouth line has to be curved down, around, up again. And then that bottom lip, just keep it really simple. You can see a tiny bit of that top lip, but not enough to put it in. Okay, we've got the facial features in. Now we can edit the facial shape, add in the details. Bring in this part. We didn't draw the ear before, it goes up like this. And then we have to draw this line here because we've got to show that there's light here on this side, but dark on this side. I might draw a few more lines like this, one like this. Now the phone. So the phone comes down this way. And I'm comparing it to the nose there, down past the chin, and back up. What angle is that phone? Okay, then let's draw the thumb. So this is a little oval here, and then it comes out like that down to the wrist. Now, finger. So with fingers, we're going to draw a, a pretty much straight, draw a straight line there, and then a curve down. Straight, and then a straight, a curve. Okay, now we're going to move on to the faces that are angled up. I've drawn the Loomis head to show the angles that we need to consider. So you can see here that the red line is quite angled, and then the face facial features are angled this way. You can see because the face is angled this way, we have to make sure the eyes and the mouth and all the nose are all lined this way. Up angle of faces, faces between the chin and the mouth, that section there is the largest, and the forehead is the narrowest. The silhouette after we've done the structure. So I'm just going around the silhouette, I'm not looking exactly where that hair goes. Just getting that shape, so that angle of the hair, and then about the same distance I went this way, coming back this way, and then that's the back of the neck, angles back this way, down like that. And then this way, we can see it follows this same angle. I'm looking at that angle there, and I'm not really knowing exactly what's there. I'm just drawing the basic lines, and it comes down to this point here. Make sure I've got a nice thick that comes back. Once again, if you don't get that right first go, don't give up. Just just have leave it and put in the face, and then we can come back and change that. So we've got the, the general silhouette. Now let's move on to the face shape. Come up here, and down there, comes here, the bottom of that beard there. Okay, that's the face shape here, so they're the two dots, and I'm thinking about the angle that I looked at in the first step. This angle there, then between these two dots would be here, but it's moved up slightly, so this is the, the largest distance. And the angle that I had before, that I can see that space is a lot narrower than this one. Now we can put in the eyebrows and the bottom of the nose. So this is the eyebrow, and here make sure it curves around the eye socket, the angle here, comes around there, the two eyebrows, and then the nose, up the side here like this, and come across. So now we can go onto the eyes and the lips. The corner of the eye back here, so it's angled quite far there. So now it's up close to the eyebrow again. And the width of the nose across, and I've got that that, that angle you can see. There, that's a width, about a width of the nose. The other way, that's where the corner is, hidden behind the nose. And then we draw another of the nose. Okay, so this time, and this time we're curving up instead of down, because we're not looking down, we're looking up. Goes up like this, two curves of the top eyelids. And then you can add in the iris. If in doubt, just draw it slightly smaller than what it looks like. So then if it's too 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 small, you can always make it bigger. It's harder to make it smaller. So about halfway between the chin and the nose is where the corners are. And so I'll go up a little bit, make sure it's a good angle here and angle there. So it's just below that corner of the mouth. And then we angle across like we did before. So actually the middle of the lips is a bit further above this point here. So so the split between the lips comes around like that. So what we're focusing on that split. And then the bottom here like this. And then we can add just a little line. So now we've got the facial features, we can adjust and add detail. Put that in, the pupil I should say. And then this this uh, bottom eyelid, it's actually curved. The goatee, it's a little of hair, facial hair there, and then it comes down from the top eyebrow there and between the nose, bottom of the nose. And I'm just looking where compared to the back of the head. So here the lady here is looking up at quite a steep angle and we can see here that's the angle that we're looking for, something quite steep. And then the, the facial features are just at a slight angle down. Okay, so let's start with the silhouette. So I start at the top of her hair there, that where the blue outline is. We're coming down this way, but I better go on this side just to compare, it's a bit easier on this side. Come in, it comes around her shoulder like that. This is the scarf and that's the rest of the jacket there. Now we're going to move on to the, the face shape. So we'll go across here like this. This is where that top wave of her hair is. And I'm just comparing this distance where the top forehead is. And it's about, would be about a third across here. As I said, I'm not too worried um, if it's not right because we can always go back. Okay, we're coming down here. I want to get that jawline. But one way you can get the, the face shape is to look at that top shape and then go down to where the chin is and just put a little mark there at the angle. 
see the angle there I'm looking at? The angle there. So we're just going to guess here the outline and then the jawline comes up like this and come around like that. So like that. That's the face shape in there. Okay. Top here where the gap between the eyebrows, but we'll go a bit further up. That's a little bit high up there. Trying to get that angle there and then come down in the middle between the chin and the brow and then up a little bit. Okay. Next step is the brow and the bottom of the nose. So let's go for it here up and then to here and then that at the eyebrows and it's got a bit of an angle there and then we go this is a bit of tricky angle of course the bottom of the corner there and the other corners up here up and around quite a high angle there to the nose and where does it come back so here's the gap between the eyebrows and then we go down a little bit here so let's see if that's the bridge of the nose there just there. I'm leaving a gap there because sometimes if there's a mistake you can um, change it before you commit to the whole line let's go I might do this whole line now because I'm happy with that Okay, and then the bottom nostrils. I'll start on the far right one, just at the top here, where I think the top of the nostril is, going down and then down this way, just the line down. And now we can do the eyes and the lips. So going up this way, really angled, and it comes down, not straight, but a little bit back. That, and you can see I'm just comparing. That's what observational sketching is. We're just comparing off each step as we go into the details. The width of the nose across the one eye, and I'm considering that angle again, and then width of the nose to there, and then width of the nose to there. So then we'll do the iris. See the top's cut off. It's only half an iris. And then in the middle here as well. Now we'll do the lips. So between here and here, we go halfway, up a little bit. And where's that corner of the lip? Down from here. And this side is actually same angle. So don't go straight. I'm gonna go same angle that we've been doing everything. Sort of equal with the eye there. And then we draw the bottom part of that split of the lip. Curve slightly. And then we do the top where the teeth are. We ignore the top for now. The teeth. Then we can do just in between a little hint of that top lip, the bottom of the lip. Okay, now we've got all the features in the right position. Let's do some refinement and some details. Jawline is probably here. And then, then that means the ear coming down there is about there. That helps balance the face, having that ear in. There's a few lines here. And from the chin, I can see that scarf coming there. And now I can outline these shapes here. So that's all the sort of wrinkles that I was doing in the last tutorial. Now the detail around the face. So pupils, okay, eyelashes. So what I'm doing is in one line, just going up and down. And then we've got a line under here. And that sort of creates that shape. So that's all the line work done. But now how do you add some really simple light wash on top? So that's what we're going to do next. Um, I've got my round brush. Um, and so the first color that we need is burnt sienna. Let's just paint that in from the top. And it's okay if you don't go right to the edge, you can leave little white caps with this style at like that. Let's do it like this as well. I'm trying to avoid the eyes in this one because the others didn't have the white of their eyes showing. The lips just going roughly around where all the skin is and the ear and down here. See, that's very light. A little bit more liberally as I go down, trying to avoid the teeth. If you do go over the teeth, that's okay. You can use the Posca pen. Yellow ochre at the top, and that's ready to go with burnt umber. And see this one up here, it's just outside is going to have these blonde streaks outside like this. And then as we get on the inside, towards the inside, let's grab the other color, mix it in. And we can also add a bit of Payne's gray into the mix, particularly dark, probably a little bit of light color coming through the glasses as well. Let's get Payne's gray. This is Dioxidine purple. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is that the color along this edge is very uh, this, uh, this, sorry, there's light bouncing off her hair there. So I'm going to leave that white. I'll come down. And as I come down, I add more of this color. A lighter wash on this side. Payne's gray. And instead of the purple, we're going to use burnt umber. Let's do the same thing. It's quite a light wash. And as we're coming down, oh, this might be light on this side. So we'll do this before add any more dark color. Okay, so now add a bit more Payne's gray to make it darker. And that will blend out so that we can see the lights hitting him this way. And that's why it's a bit lighter brown. And do her eyebrow. Okay, dark eyebrows there. Light yellow ochre there. Start up from here. Slap that on. We do that. And we want to leave little bits of white. Like that. And as we get to the top, it's a little bit more saturated. Um, and we can add in some burnt umber there. The colour and it comes around here. And here, still a little bit of color there. Now we'll do the clothing there. And for her jumper, it's white. So what can we do? We'll, we'll get burnt, we'll get um, permanent rose and give her a pink jumper. Really nice expressive strokes. And see with her jumper, we've got those wrinkles. And we're trying, I'm trying to capture some of those with the white of the light there. So adding a little bit of 
purple in there, Viridian Green and Payne's Grey. And once again, we can see lights coming in here and there's light on the edge here. So we can dump some color, especially where the shadow is and the shadow here and here. Okay, just a really light splash there. This this guy's t-shirt will go to ultramarine. And again, I don't want it to be too strong. The paint's gray. There we go, water. And you can always add some interesting effects here if you tap your brush. Ultramarine and my famous combination that I love. Ultramarine and this is permanent rose. It's a rich purple color. What am I doing? I'm aiming for seeing where those white little highlights are there the rest would be in shadow there and then there might be one on the top edge here if you tap your brush and it's got lots of paint on it, it makes really random splatters some are small some are big block out that there's something a bit brighter there okay that's the base color when you're doing the lips you don't need to outline the the whole lip with pink bright pink it's just sort of in the middle focus on the middle and with the guy i actually just get a bit more of the skin tone and you can just pop that in there. Dark color that we have here for the eyes. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the shadows. And for people, I like to use Purple Lake. Really wash this down, a lot of water. This side of the face is in shadow. A bit more than that, just like that. Just so very light. And then just the main bit. So there's a bit on the eye there, a bit on the side of the nose there. It's too purpley, just take it out um, underneath the eyelash, underneath this side, um, put a bit under here. I'm just trying not to overdo it, that's all. And then there's those shadows that I mentioned before on the wrinkles here, which we can add in just slightly. There we go. So we added a little bit and not too much. Permanent rose, just a little bit here, a bit on this side. You can do the same here. It's a little bit on the cheek there. You can use other other shadow colors, whatever you prefer. A bit under there, a little bit on the ear. This side of the nose, top lip, um, underneath the lip. And then I'm just gonna add a general big broad shadow just here. Little bits in the ear. And then there's a lot here, down the neck, just down to next to the Adam's apple and down. Down here, across and underneath the eyes. I'm gonna wait for that, that to dry and then add a few highlights. So this is a fine tip Posca pen. The light's coming from here and I can see maybe on the lips, um, maybe on the forehead here. Mostly it's just adding just a little bit of texture and interest. But here we've got the nose there. It might be one here. And then this, this collar here like that, that'll make that stand out nicely. A highlight there. And I can see there's a bit of white there. And in the white of the eye, I put too much paint in so I can add. And now just adding in that dynamic sort of reflections around. So there we go. I'm really happy with those. Um, let me know if those seven steps helped you to be able to sketch portraits more confidently. But if you want to sketch along with me with the full version of this tutorial, the references, the templates, and all the steps, then I recommend you check out my Patreon because I put this full version there. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.